how did it happen? I think it was really the spirit of Claudio Abado who created this orchestra. I remember very well going to Salzburg to meet him in 2000 and he was talking about this idea of an orchestra with friends who had worked with him for several years at the Berlin Philharmonic or in other institutions. And uh, he had this conviction about the dream and I thought, well, <laughs> if he's convinced, uh, it's going to happen. And I spoke to my board chairman at the time, and uh, Jörg Reinshagen, and um, he said, do it. And um, it was obviously not a small budget, but a rather big budget that we had to newly create at Lucerne Festival. But it worked step by step, and in 2003 we started, and oh my God, this first concert is, I can never forget listening to the first bars of this orchestra. And you just knew it, this is a world dimension that perhaps the world has never experienced before. The, the musicians come together for a short moment in, in their yearly plans, um, but it's like taking a time out from reality. It's like indulging yourself into the moment of music making. Obviously the musicians are all great and wonderful, but it is like focusing in two weeks into something that is not realistic, that is somehow has this um, very, very high level um, existentialist uh, quality, meaning that perhaps tomorrow there is no more music making. And I think when musicians of that caliber come to this border where maybe you drop and you drop somewhere where you don't know, then it has this energy, it has this compassion, passion, and um, it becomes something that only lives in the moment. And that's quite a phenomenon. And I think that uh, Claudio Abado built up this spirit and it's being continued now under the leadership of Ricardo Chai. Well, it, obviously it was a sad moment when, when Claudio died. And um, it was the end of a, of a great partnership. But at the same time, I knew that Claudio would have wanted us to continue. And I also knew that there's no second Claudio Abado. There will be a new music director of a different quality and of greatness of, of different kind. And I think we found in Ricardo Chai somebody who goes his own way, who has his own convictions, but who also has the time to give to the Lucerne Festival Orchestra. He's not running around the world all the time. And um, I think we are developing now this really these qualities. Ricardo Chai developed new repertoire that was very important. We did Ravel cycle, we did a Stravinsky cycle, we did a Richard Strauss cycle. Uh, we are now in the middle of the Rachmaninoff cycle, completing all the symphonies and piano concertos. And so we are very much involved in the development also of the repertoire. And um, it's, it's a new life, but it's a fantastic life. The very first time in the very first rehearsal when I heard the orchestra, was mind-blowing. Then, of course, the, the performances of Mahler's second in, in the first festival. I remember very well the, the tour in Japan when we played in Tokyo Suntory Hall for a week and the following these concerts had and the admiration we received is absolutely unforgettable to me. You know, even the very last concert of Claudio with Bruckner's Ninth Symphony, uh, where we all knew most likely that it, this partnership would come to an end, was uh, deeply moving. I have great uh, confidence that the orchestra will remain as it is. It will be one of the centerpieces of the Lucerne Festival. And I hope also now after the pandemic that it will be able to go back on tours and bring the fascination of, of its music making to the world.